He, Michael Chong, and his family were targeted back in 2021 by Beijing. Mr. Chong joins me live now from our studios in Ottawa. Hi, Mr. Chong. Good to have you with us. Thank you for making the time. Good to be here. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Um, I, I wanted to start off, I think you were able to, to listen into some of what Minister LeBlanc said. He said that Canadians can expect a, a response, uh, a firm response uh, to what happened to you and, and your family very soon. Uh, your take on that? Well, I, <clears throat> it's inexplicable why this diplomat continues to remain in Canada. Uh, it's inexplicable that this government sat on this information for two years. Um, and only started to look into it once the report was pub published in the Global Mail. Uh, the government's inaction after four days uh, after this news breaking in the Global Mail is, is dumbfounding. Uh, it, you know, the government effectively might as well put up a large billboard for authoritarian states around the world to say, you know, you can conduct these foreign interfer interference threat activities here through your diplomats here in Canada against Canadians and there'll be no consequences. Yep. I think we got to this place, Vashi, precisely because the government in past instances of these threat activities didn't expel Beijing's or other authoritarian states' diplomats. If you look at the last several years, the government of Canada has not expelled a single PRC diplomat, nor have they expelled a single Russian diplomat, despite evidence of these threat activities being perpetrated by diplomats here in Canada. And if you compare and contrast that to our democratic allies, uh, who have expelled over 400 Russian diplomats, uh, it, US, the U.S. government and European governments collectively have expelled over 400 Russian diplomats uh, since the war began in Ukraine. Just recently, Germany announced that numerous Russian diplomats were expelled for subversive activities. This Canadian government, the Trudeau government, hasn't expelled a single uh, PRC or Russian diplomat. And I think that sent the signal that these diplomats can conduct these activities with impunity and without consequence here on Canadian soil. And I think that's how we got to this place. Uh, just a quick point. My memory is a bit foggy, but I, I do think I remember Minister Freeland in her capacity as Foreign Affairs Minister expelling some lower-level Russian diplomats at the Russian embassy. I don't believe it was the ambassador, but I do remember other people, but, but I take your point regarding uh, China. I just want to follow correct. up on, on the, the government's, um, as you describe, or as you would characterize latency here, and, and specifically ask you, look, the, what the, the Foreign Affairs Minister said today was... You know, I, I thought she was fairly forth, forthcoming in saying, we're looking, we're assessing the potential consequences of doing this. We know, we, we saw what happened to Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver. We know that China is capable of retaliating in a way that really can hurt Canadian citizens. Is it not incumbent? Aren't the, isn't the government doing its job by making that assessment? Yes, they are. With one exception, the minister suggested that economic considerations economic interests uh, might outweigh the need for the Canadian government to protect the safety and security of Canadians here on Canadian soil. And that is appalling. Uh, no decision should be taken to, to ignore a threat to the safety and security of Canadians uh, because the government's worried about some Canadian company losing money. Uh, th this, is, this is appalling. Uh, safety and security of Canadians, of Canadian families, should always be first and foremost above uh, considerations of economic interest. And so I think that is quite, um, quite concerning that the minister would link uh, the profitability of, of a company or its ability to uh, invest in the PRC uh, with uh, the need to protect the safety and security of Canadians. If, if there are, um, and, I, and I completely understand the point you're making, but if there are, for example, lots of Canadian jobs at stake, again, isn't it incumbent perhaps not to have that determine the outcome of their decision, as you heard me press Minister LeBlanc, but for it to be something that they do take into consideration? Well, I think it's appropriate to take economic considerations into, into account if you're dealing with other economic considerations or other... Uh, issues, absolutely, but not when you're when you're when you're dealing with the safety and security of Canadians and their families here in Canada. I think that is that is beyond the pale. Uh, you know, our our law enforcement doesn't decide whether or not to prosecute individuals who are threatening other individuals in Canada. Uh, 
with the consideration of what it's going to do to the to the local economy or whether it's going to hurt uh, you know a, a particular economic interest uh, when it comes to safety and security economic considerations should not come into play economic considerations certainly can come into play when it comes to other considerations uh, but not when it comes to protecting the safety and security of Canadians uh, I also uh, asked the minister about something that you made evident in the House of Commons today around the timeline and, and kind of who knew, again, who knew what when. Um, the information that the government relayed yesterday was that CSIS had decided not to share uh, any of their intelligence with you or with the Prime Minister. Uh, can, can you explain what you learned today that, that runs uh, a little bit counter to that? Yeah, the Prime Minister, as you mentioned, suggested yesterday that this intelligence assessment never, uh, never was sent by CSIS to government departments and to the central agency of the PCO. Uh, that's not true. This intelligence assessment was sent by CSIS to departments, to the relevant departments and to the Privy Council Office and to the National Security and Intelligence Advisor. So the Prime Minister needs to clarify uh, his remarks yesterday. But more, more important than the astonishing fact that he didn't know about this information two years ago it is the fact that he's responsible to know. He is the head of government. He is responsible for the machinery of government. He's responsible for the organizational structure of the government and most importantly according to his own open and accountable government document he is responsible for national security and that he would set things up in a way so that he wasn't told about these things or he didn't want to know about these things is shocking and very concerning what other national security threats does he not want to know about is he not being told about you know it, it's as if uh, he, he set up his government in a way that he told his told the ch chief of the defense staff that he didn't want to know about a, an enemy aircraft headed for Canadian airspace. I mean, it, it's a very similar type of situation. It is astonishing that he set things up in a way so that he didn't. He's not informed about national security threats, and and that is his accountability, and that's something that he needs to address. Uh, Mr. Chong, just before I let you go, um, in, in sort of the interviews I've conducted since the Globe and Mail first made this, uh, did this reporting, I've tried to understand or, or get some information on why CSIS would not have conveyed that information more directly to you. I, I imagine you would have had the same questions. People say, have told me, or, or former CSIS directors, for example, that they would have some bar th through which they assess or against which they assess whether something is serious enough uh, to, to, to let you know. Have you been provided the details of the way in which Beijing was targeting you and your family? Yes, I've been told that this particular diplomat uh, in the Toronto consulate was trying to collect information about my family in the PRC. Um, that's what I've been told. Uh, I've been told that, uh, that the Ministry of State Security in the People's Republic of China was also doing the same. Um, and so... Uh, you know, it's clear that they were trying to uh, intimidate uh, by using the family of an MP uh, to intimidate an MP and other MPs um, to affect the course of public debates in the House of Commons on foreign policy. Uh, and so this is and very, just, very concerning. Yeah. I just wanted to know, did, did CSIS, just so that I, because I, I, heard, I heard it called allegations against this diplomat. Did CSIS confirm the, uh, the involvement of that diplomat to you? Yes, they did. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chong, thank you very much. I appreciate the, the uh, information and, and your time tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.